What is up, guys? Get here with Foutech Unlimited. It has been a couple days uh, since I've done a video, and it's been a couple days since I told you I was going to do the winner video. The selection is coming, so we're going to do that tonight. It is the 6th. It is what it is. We actually had a local fair and a whole bunch of activities, so I decided to pack up and bring the family out and have some fun for a couple days. So really, I wasn't even home to do anything. But I'm home now, and I already got everything loaded up on the computer so here we go right here youtube random comment picker and what i'm gonna do is uh it is linked to our 7,000 sub uh video and what it's going to do is it's going to go through all of the comments and it's going to pick a winner now the winner that it picks you're going to have 24 hours from when it picks or the end of this video of when it posts i should say to uh contact me either uh you know throw a comment uh, the winner throw a comment or email me at this email. And what I'll do is I'll get in touch with you and uh, I am going to make you a holster. Now, uh, it's completely up to you. If you are a holster manufacturer or not, I will still make you a holster. It is what it is. Um, but if you don't want the holster, that you just comment it, just a comment, that's perfectly fine too. Just let me know and I will pick another winner. So uh, without further ado, let's do this. All right, so let's see here. Let's get this right here. I'm just going to hold it. Um, so this is the link of the video that I'm doing. Uh, and I'm going to do that anything goes. It's going to load the comments. And it took out duplicate comments or comments from me. It's taken out. So there's 131. And now let's pick a winner of who's going to get a holster. Now, just a reminder, oh, so many shirts I got, just a reminder, the um, holstersmith and knifekits.com, the Steve Andrews and his guys over at those places are going to be supplying all of the hardware for this holster build. So I'm actually really looking forward to it, but let's just do it. Here we go. Point. Oh, there we go. David Pyle. Let's see here. Did I see reinforcement rivets on the mounting holes? Yes, you did. On uh, So when I do a level 2 hood, I actually build a gusset and I rivet it to it and that stops the flex from happening uh, regardless of how thick, thick the kydex is. Um, kydex will still bend even the one point, or the point one two five, not as much, but uh, I will actually do that gusket, the gusset all the way up to uh, 0.9, uh, 0.93 or whatever the, uh, the thickness kydex is. So again, you have one. If you could contact me again at this email, Let's hook it up. If you don't want it, let me know, and I will do this again. All right, guys. It is the next day uh, after filming the winner. I uh, actually went ahead inside, uh, had some dinner, and pretty much passed out as soon as I sat down. So back at it again. We're going to be doing a Glock 40 with a TLR9. If you're not familiar, that is Glock's massive, I mean, look at this thing, massive 10-millimeter uh, semi-automatic, and the TLR9 is their dual-battery massive, massive uh, flashlight. And uh, this is going to be a hunting ring, hunting rig uh, for down in Texas. Now, um, this uh, actual firearm is going to be compensated. It's going to have a uh, KKM barrel and comp on it, which means we're going to do this open bottom because uh, cutting and everything, just modifying is going to be a lot um, and then we're doing dual layer. The outside is actually going to be going foliage green, which I have right here. The inside's going black. Uh, the thickness of the kydex that I have for both layers are 0.06 each, uh, which will give you a thickness of 0.12 in the end, which is extremely thick. I was going to do it um, 0.08 on the top and 0.06 on the bottom. Well, that's overkill. Uh, so we are doing this. And I am actually looking forward to it. So I have my heat press already heated up. I have my foam inside the heat press. And now we're going to block this out. This is going to have a RTI 34 plate on it with a speed lock hood, which I just grabbed and put in the bin. This is also going to be mounted, which for some odd reason, when I got it in from Blade Tech, or not Blade Tech, um, G Code. They didn't assemble it, so I'm going to have to assemble this, which I'll show you how to do it, because sometimes they ship it out and not even assembled, which is kind of weird because I paid for it. 
But anyways, uh, I did this one in OD green, so it's going to be a combination of OD and foliage. I think it'll uh, contrast pretty well. So, oh, this goes over here. So let's knock this out of the park, and I got to continue doing more holsters. So, just waiting on material. That's all it is. It's all a big waiting game. But anyways, um, we don't need any of this. I will take these, set this aside. Let's get this done. Let's get it on. All right, so take out what we need from here. I never use the hardware that comes with the RTI plate. Stump that. All right, we are going to be using these plates right here. Perfecto. Um, now we're going to have to do the suppressor right sights. So let's go ahead and get those on there. For that, I will take this quarter inch piece of HDPE, line it up, and that's how I install it. Let's go down the line and do it. Sadly, I'm going to have to find another piece. I think Home Depot sells them, but the wood version. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of those up because this one is just not long enough to do the longer handguns. Because I cut it, not thinking it, uh, but I also did it like seven years ago. So And then after I do that, I like to take one of the smaller ones and I'll actually go straight down on both sides and what that does is it kind of holds it from going like this um, but it also allows like a an opening for it uh, it's kind of hard to explain but you will see once uh, once everything goes through so let's go ahead and use our huh, mile of blue tape to cover this it's three four and five to this side. Right, again, this is going to be an open bottom. And, okay, let's set it flat. Oh, UPS is coming. I can't wait. I have a, uh, a light that I'm waiting for for them, from them. The new lights I put up, I turned them on and one uh, one decided to pop. Literally, brand new lights out of the box and it had a burn mark. So I called the company and they sent me out a brand new one. So hopefully it will come in quick. And the way I had it wired is that light is actually the first one in the series of two lights on the second floor in the holster shop. So I can't, can't even use the lights right now. So hopefully, hopefully it comes soon. All right, um, this is not ambidextrous, so I don't have to worry about that. But on this side, this is going to be mounted here, and then we're going to have bam right there. But until then, we have to lock this out. Looks good right there. Make it parallel to the top of the slide. so it doesn't move and where's my dime there we go I'll place that right there that way that bolt is covered and there's plenty of room right in there go to this side and the exact same thing retention is right there but there's going to be a whole bunch of retention on that body so or not retention but it's going to be on it Let's put in this right here because Glocks have the, the thumb area on it. It's kind of hard uh, to get something to balance there. So I always put blocking there. There we go. Go 
ahead and wrap this underneath. And I'll do it one more time right next to that. Attach it right here to make sure these two are on the same plane. There we go, just like that. All right, now this is ready for the accessories. So uh, this is RTI 34. So that's going to go probably around this area. Um, so that'll be this plate, and then we're going to do for ease. We'll do that plate for this one. So that's going to be for the other side, and we actually have to put a piece right here, and that's going to be for the slide release. I'm going to extend this down pretty far though, reason being it's going to mount the uh, RTI plate right on top of it, so instead of building up the blocking, you could always just extend this one. And let's see here. I'm going to line this button up with the edge of it, which means this is going to go right here. Looks like we need to go a little bit higher. Just mark that there. Let's try that. Oh, yeah. All right. Or I could put this here. Oh, yeah. That's it right there. Money. Oh, I'm not using that one. We're using this one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna tape that down. And throw this right here. Double check it and lock it down. Like I said, a TI 34. This one plate will do both. Here's a 34 on this side and 33 on this side. So we'll go ahead and get this side going. Now we need adequate space. Uh, so we'll throw that right around, right around there. I'm going to throw that right there so it bumps it up just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and line that up. And we will tape it. right in place. So the uh, retention indentation on this side is going to be non-existent, but there's going to be friction along this side of the, of the flashlight, so that'll be uh, no problem for the end user. So all the retention will be on the other side. All right. And... Line that up, and that's going to go right there. I'll be happy. All right, now we need to do a retention plate because I don't believe I've done this before. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick peek at my plates. Now, believe it or not, dual layer actually isn't that bad. I have done it on this channel before, but I'm going to show you just how easy it really is. Uh, we're going to put our outside layer down first. 
Bam, I've already cleaned this and I've already done a heat cycle. Our inside layer is going down right on top of that. I'm just gonna even it up. Uh, and then um, this is what I do that you should do. All right, so I have it set for 150 seconds. I'm actually gonna up that to pretty much the same for sublimation. I'm gonna up it to probably 400 seconds. Keep the same temp at 390. Um, there it is. You gotta clean that off, throw it on. All clean, hard to do that with one hand. And moderate pressure. And that is going to really bond and stick them together. That way they, they are not coming out. Now the reason why I do it for the 400 seconds is to give it the time to melt together because that's what you want because it's gonna come apart. There's gonna be voids, uh, hence the uh, the pressure going down on it. And again, this is uh, equivalent to 0.125 Kydex. So this is gonna be pretty thick stuff. Um, foam is going back on top and then this is ready to press. You got it right here, ready to go. Looking forward to it. Well, let's just do it. Now we wait. Out of the press, this actually looks pretty damn good. Here it is right here. Uh, I did this while I was waiting for something, but this looks pretty, pretty awesome. So uh, let's cut it apart. I'm gonna have to cut right here because these are fused together and there is no, oh, yeah, that's it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this right here. It'll open it back up. And then uh, I got to trace everything and drill it all out. Uh, but again, this is equivalent to 0.12. And this is going to be very thick stuff. So uh, this is going to be nice. I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's get it out. Never mind. I got it open without cutting it. So um, let's mark this up. And generally with the uh, TLR9, I like to do uh, three retention holes. Uh, just because I, I just think it looks better with the, the sheer size of this holster but let's uh let's get this gone Take our drill guide, and like I said, I like to I like to make it look look good. So one, two, three. And remember, this is uh, compensated. So we're actually going to. This is kind of where it's difficult. Now the compensator, I have to, I'll have to look it up because generally the comps will like wrap around the muzzle, but muzzle ends here. So, and then we're just going to come straight down like that. Obviously, that's going to be straight like that. And that's going to be all she wrote. We got a drill, 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 drill. And this is going to be nice. Comfy, buddy. <laughs> you have a boy.
Now to interrupt this build for a special news bulletin. FedEx just came, my lights are back. So that one right there, I uh, powered it up and then it popped instantly. So I contacted the company and they sent me another one. So they're like, yeah, listen, why don't you send us the old one and we'll send you a new one. No big deal, right? So literally uh, UPS just came. So I'm like, huh, should it just be one ball because it's heavy. Well, son of a bee, they sent me another 10. I only needed one. Christmas. All right, that's pretty exciting. So we'll see. Cause I, I, I got an extra nine now. Cause this is so much brighter. That's so nice. Um, I planned on getting another ten more. Looks like I'm, I'm good. So hell yeah. All right, back to building. Now this is a hard part of this build. I have it drilled out, cut to shape. It is mostly sanded. I haven't buffed the edge yet. As you can see, there's still some just crap here. Um, but this looks phenomenal. Uh, it, it looks real good. Fitment was good too. Okay. Now here's the thing. When you have a compensator and you're cutting for a compensator, uh, you have to take in mind that a lot of times the compensators are just as wide as the slide of the, uh, of the firearm. Now the Glock 40, you see how that has a tapered edge right here. So that kind of sucks because, um, judging by pictures online of the KKM comp, that the comp is just as wide as the slide and that divot is still there. Which means that even if we cut this open, if we don't cut at where it starts to uh, slant in, it's gonna hit that and then it's gonna drag across it, scratch it up and all this stuff. So you have two options. Um, option number one, cut the holster right along that line and then adjust it accordingly. But this much of your gun is gonna stick out. I don't really like that because then the compensator plus the gun, it just, I don't know, it functions, but it just doesn't look right. Or this isn't really, it's harder to do. Obviously the easy thing to do is to do this, but what I will do is I'll show you is I'm going to take off this TLR nine with the washer. Now the second option, which is the option that I'm most likely going to do is uh, very carefully heat up the edges okay and then shove this end of the gun in this way i mean technically you can do it this way too and just push because this is um set up for the flashlight and taking the flashlight off will allow us to do that but anyways we're going to heat this up evenly and then we're going to go ahead and push it through and then cool it after we uh crimp it so that'll give us that flush look um, because the compensator, it stops at this body line. So really, we only need to do that. But if we shove the whole muzzle in there, it'll work. And I just put the gun in the vise. And literally, all we're going to do is we're going to heat it up. And then we're just going to, I'm just going to push it down. Then I'll take it off and then push it through the other side. Almost there. Oh my God, there. I 
Now, what do you say? Let's throw this together. Now, I have already gone ahead and used my Noga RC2000, which is this tool right here, and I've already cleaned all the holes on the inside. And now we're just gonna go ahead and add everything that we need to do. Uh, the only difference that I'm doing uh, hardware-wise is I'm using a half inch long screw for the retention than I am. Uh, normally it's .4375, but like I said, normally uh, I use a smaller one, but swapping it out. Now, where is El Bago of hardware that I just misplaced? Ah, there it is, right where I put it. All right, I keep these. Toss those ones, and I keep that one. Everything in here is going to get Loctite except for the retention screws. Go ahead and throw this in. Check this. Feels good. I like to shave a little bit off the top. Not a lot. Just a little. And that is going to go right on here. Remember, do not over tighten. When you over tighten, that's when uh, these don't work anymore. You don't want that. Um, veil, that's good. Right, and with that, did a couple of squirts of oil on the inside, a couple uh, squirts of rim oil to get that moving good. Oh yeah, me likey. All right, let's throw this on. And you guys know I actually keep an RTI wheel on hand because I like to verify that it will still work. mainly because of the spacing. Perfect, just clears it, so I'm okay with that. So, let's throw this in here. Good, right there. And just so you guys are aware, the Glock 21, which is a 45, is the same thickness, just different length. Uh, so you can use this for test fitting or folding if you don't have the actual firearm. drilled and again here is the Noga cleaning the inside of that let's see here this might be too small yeah that's too short so we're gonna have to get a longer one and there we go too small will cause drag too long will cause flop you need just right and then I like to kind of square that up function check we're good for the retention. I think the three really complements right here. 
even spacing and then right in a row and then again like I said these are whoop, half inch wow. there's uno dos and tres And voila, another holster is born. Here is the finished product. It is absolutely beautiful, and that click is absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, adjustable retention, and the best part about this is you can actually use the thumb to uh, aid in getting it out. So um, I think this came out absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, it's going down to Texas to help with the uh, hog hunting, and I think this gentleman is going to love it. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot him a text so he knows that this is on its way. But uh, check that out. Oh, and again, like I said, so that's how I make sure that the comp can uh, come out the end as I stick that out or stick it in. But again, the Glock uh, 20 and 21 is the same size frame-wise thickness. Uh, it's just not as long, so that's perfect for using it for what you need. And like I said, this still no problem will lock on to the thigh rig giving you a level two setup uh, with the hood and that's all she wrote so again thank you guys for watching this episode congratulations to that winner again for that uh, i hope you uh contact me let me know whether or not you would like a holster or it's going to go on to the next guy if it's going to go on to the next guy i'm going to go ahead throw it on the uh, comment picker and the next person's going to get it and so on so let me know um and we're just going to go ahead from there also i'm really starting to uh throw movies down on my garage channel so if you guys are interested in anything other than kydex uh, pretty much it's going to be the garage life, uh, my house life here uh, at the compound. And uh, I'm going to be showing pretty much everything that I'm working on car-wise. So the link to that YouTube is actually in the description. I would love to get just 1,000 subs by December. That's all I want is 1,000. I'm at like 150 right now. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, but it's it's a brand new uh, YouTube. So if you want to subscribe, that'll help me out. Once I hit 1,000 subs, things kind of go from there. And I only need a little over 900 more. So uh, if you want to, I deeply appreciate it. If not, I still appreciate you for following this channel. Thank you again, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.